This is a monitor with dead pixels. It's a defect your new monitor can have out of the box, but there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. True, a lot of places will let you return any purchase within 30 days or so, but after that, it can be very hard to get a monitor with dead pixels fixed, even if it's under warranty. I'm not saying that whoever made your monitor won't honor the warranty if, say, it won't turn on or the backlight goes out, but why do display manufacturers just give their customers the cold shoulder if some of the pixels on their screen, you know, the thing you're looking directly at, straight up don't work? Let's start out by talking about what a dead pixel is. On a typical LCD display, the transistors that control each pixel can get stuck in one position or another permanently, meaning the liquid crystals will be turned in such a way that no light can pass through, rendering that pixel dark or off. On an OLED display, you'll instead have a pixel or individual color subpixel completely burnt out, but the result is the same, an unsightly dark spot that can be noticeable against a light colored background. Pixels can also die by being permanently in an on state, often called a bright pixel defect, causing a distracting bright spot especially noticeable during dark scenes. So we've established that permanently dark or bright pixels can be very distracting, but why do they end up in the finished product that you just bought? Why? I mean, think about how many CPU cores are defective when they roll off the assembly line. Those cores are just disabled and the chip is sold as a model with fewer cores. With displays though, the dead pixels remain a part of the product experience. There's nowhere to hide them, but eliminating the problem is non-trivial. That's because a standard 1080p display has over 2 million individual pixels. And if you have a 4K screen, it's well over 8 million. When you're manufacturing that many tiny screen elements, defects are highly likely. If a panel had to be perfect, there'd be significant amounts of wasted product. Combine that with the high cost of shipping and replacing defective panels when a customer wants an exchange, and you arrive where we are today. The display industry has actually settled on what it considers a normal amount of dark or bright pixel defects that one panel can have before it's considered bad. They even ratified these numbers in a document, and we'll tell you about how they justify not giving you a refund right after we thank Videocom. Struggling to make your presentations engaging? Videocom can help with that. With a bunch of features to spruce up your projects, such as per-slide webcam embedding, automatic cloud saving, and team collaboration tools, making a presentation has never been more easy and intuitive. Turn that drab PowerPoint presentation into an experience that will be sure to leave an impression with your audience. Check out Videocom at the link below for free and use code LINUS for 50% off any paid subscription. There's actually an ISO standard that many display manufacturers use as a guideline for determining how many pixels need to be defective on a display panel before they give you a replacement. The ISO divides electronic displays into several classes depending on how critical it is for them to be accurate. Most consumer monitors out there are considered class two by the manufacturer, meaning pixel faults matter, but it isn't crucial for the panel to be perfect. In many cases, even more professional grade screens, such as the Asus ProArt series, use the class two rules as a baseline, even if the panel itself was originally manufactured to be higher grades, such as class zero or one. Class zero, sounds like an anime. And for class two screens, a panel is considered defective if it has more than two dead or bright hole pixels or more than five faulty subpixels, the small red, blue, or green dots that make up a full pixel. Note though that the ISO standard is not a hard and fast rule that display manufacturers have to abide by in order to sell displays in your region. While some companies cite it, others seem to barely know it exists and many deviate from it in one direction or another. Some will be super cool and replace your screen if there's just a single defect, but it's more common to need to have between three and 12 total faults. And sometimes they even have to be in a cluster on the same part of the screen. This can be especially annoying if you have a high-end display like an OLED display. Just because you paid all that extra money for an OLED doesn't necessarily mean that the manufacturer will give you a more lenient dead pixel policy. But if the problematic pixel is suffering from a bright defect, you might have a couple of alternative options. Because an individual bright pixel is typically more noticeable than a dark one, some manufacturers will have a lower replacement threshold, sometimes as low as just one bright pixel. Other times, especially 
especially on OLED screens. Bright pixels aren't permanent, but can be unstuck with free utilities that quickly cycle the offending part of your display through many different colors. Bottom line, check that dead pixel policy carefully before throwing down tons of cash on a pricey new display. Or just sit back far enough to where you won't notice the imperfections. That's not a bad philosophy for life, actually. It's a, I support it. Hey, that was the whole video. Thanks for watching, guys. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. That option is available to you. You can also check out our other videos. You can comment below with video suggestions. You can not forget to subscribe and follow. Really, there's the world is an amazing place. You can just do stuff. Yeah.